uh, honorable guests, uh, Dr. Gutierrez and uh, Mr. Michael Lima, uh, to share their presentation about the, the situation in Cuba and the proposals for action uh, that, uh, that Canada can take. Thank you. My name is Michael Lima. I'm the Director of Democratic Spaces, the Canadian NGO advocating for human rights and democracy in Cuba. Today, I speak to you as a Cuban Canadian political refugee, human rights activist, and specialist in Cuban and Latin American history. Pro democracy leaders like Jose Daniel Ferrer, Felix Navarro, Cecilia Bascal, and countless brave Cubans arrested during the July 11, 2021 protests endured denial of medical care, prolonged isolation, and torture. Recently, as of yesterday, we had the tragic news of the, of the for Cuban political prisoner Luis Barrios who died due to denial of medical attention with just 37 years of age. Cuban dictatorship shamelessly aligned with Russia, actively participating in the asymmetric war against Ukraine. However, despite the shameful repression in Cuba, Cuba generally faces limited international condemnation for its alliances with regimes like Russia and China. Until now, it has been the Cuban people who have made the regime pay the highest political cost when they took to the streets on July 11, 2021, and showed the world in 24 hours that the dictatorship did not have the support that it had shown in, in his propaganda for decades. Global affairs should be imposing effective sanctions on the most egregious human rights violators within Cuba's repressive apparatus. Instead, Ottawa's approach seems to prioritize trade over democracy and human rights. The Canadian government and private sector help directly sustain the regime through tourism, channeling large revenues into GAESA, the Cuban military conglomerate that controls the tourist industry and other lucrative sectors of the Cuban economy. This time, Canada listened to the voices of the Cuban people. Cuba required more than just humanitarian aid in the form of medicine and food. The greatest humanitarian tragedy faced by Cubans is the unjust imprisonment of thousands for exercising their fundamental human rights. Canada should be leading international efforts to secure the immediate release of political prisoners, proclaiming its own moral grounds through motions in Parliament and resolutions in international bodies such as the United Nations Human Rights Council. Standing in solidarity with the Cuban people in their quest for democracy, aligns with Canada's best interests and democratic values. It's time for Canada to rise up to the historic moment and support the Cuban people in their pursuit of freedom and democracy. We cannot allow silence and inaction to prevail. Thank you very much.